Yeah. This is just an extension of high school. You you graduated from high school. And if you didn't, you're, you're still not the age where you'd be going to high school. I'm not judging you, but <laughs> I don't know what your education history is. But high school time is over. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. Ooh, oh, wow. You, you can hear it's morning here. It looks like a sexy morning voice. I kind of like it when my voice is like this, honestly. Yeah. But it's not good for singing. Why do you like it? You know, it's it's the novelty, I guess. And I mm. just feel like I sound kind of like... I also like it. I feel like I sound like a woman. I feel like I sound like a man. <laughs> so this is the first Q&A of 2024. And this is a good time to announce that in 2024, we are attempting to do some more Q&As. Yeah. As this is by popular request. And so that will be taking slightly from callers and love fests, mainly because Q&As seem to be the most popular thing. People say they like them the best. So cue the uproar. <laughs> or not maybe. i don't know if there'll be enough no I, I think there'll be more people than not will be happy mm -hmm. but there will be some people who are not happy that's not to say those other episodes are going away no. it's just that like once a month normally that's one of each a month and i think now we're gonna up the q a slightly yeah okay it's so, be, so nothing's going away it's gonna be more about the shandy Yes, the Shandy experience. Shall we get going answering our Shandy's cues? Yes. Great. This first question is from B, and she wrote as in the letter with a smiley mm. face. <laughs> Dear Shandy, untraditional question here. I am a huge fan of the podcast and recently went back to early episodes that I hadn't previously listened to in search of more Shandy wisdom and laughs. I listened to episode 10, where the caller asked if she should mention that she doesn't drink in her dating profile, and you both answered a strong no, and that most men would have a problem with her not drinking at all, even though you gave her all the kudos for giving up drinking. I do drink regularly, and two years ago, I dated someone in recovery. After dating for a couple of months, I realized that it wasn't really an option for me to date someone who doesn't drink, as it felt limiting in what we could do, and like I couldn't have a drink without being judged, even though he had said he didn't care if I drank. My question, with the recent rise of sober, curious culture, have your thoughts on this changed since the original episode three years ago? Thank you for considering my question and for sharing years of wonderful advice and perspectives with us. Sincerely. B. Oh, how nice. Thank you, B. Okay, so not knowing exactly what the temperature is of the younger dating generation. I don't know what's cool or what's not cool. <laughs> I mean, I definitely think it's more in to not drink. Yeah, it's more in now than it probably even was when we answered this question. No, 100%. And that's why I think this is an interesting yeah. question because she's like, it's been three years. Do you still feel the same way? And her perspective, by the way, is from someone who does drink. Yep and dated someone who doesn't drink. That being said, I have absolutely no change to my answer. <laughs> that is so you. Yeah. That's so you, why? Explain. Very simply, there are certain things that are better left to discuss in person. Ooh. Why say something that may be misinterpreted or used as a filter mm. out of the gate as opposed to just talking about it in person be like, oh, I see your nuanced perspective. And now we can engage and talk and discuss and come to a more reasonable conclusion about this thing yeah. than me just judging whether positively or negatively. Yeah. I don't want to be judged positively or negatively outside of the bounds of what I have to offer. Oh, man. You know, I went into this one thinking I had changed my opinion, but you are convincing me right now. Mm. I think... And I don't really remember what I said three years ago about this, but I think if the person with a dating profile is seeking another person who doesn't drink, then by all means, put it there. Like you should be filtering it out. This is what I'll say. I'll have one caveat and, and to your point. Uh -huh. If it is an absolute deal breaker that your partner, the whole not drinking thing yeah, on yeah. both sides yeah. is a total deal breaker, yeah. then yes, put it in there. The same way you'd put it in there, like if you're looking for women instead of men mm -hmm. or vice versa, like yeah. it's an absolute deal breaker. Yes. So other than that, though, if there's any gray area, like you're willing to date someone who does drink while you don't drink, or you're kind of maybe the kind of person who once a year has a drink, if there's any nuance <laughs> whatsoever, do not put it in. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think in the last three years, I think it's become 
probably, let's say, 30 percent more socially acceptable to be completely sober, to not drink at all. And in fact, we had Ruby Warrington on the podcast. She invented the term sober curious. Mm. We didn't talk about that. We actually talked about her book, Women Without Kids, which I'll link here. But still, this is something that I am aware of and I think is great. You know, I think this really is a great call for a lot of people. But I think that same 30 percent could be applied to how much more difficult dating has become like each year, I think it gets like 10% more difficult. There's a million more reasons to just write someone off right out of the gate before you've met them. Which is exactly why, exactly what you said. That's why you should not put anything on your profile that might get you weeded out unnecessarily. Mm. Maybe you can get over that hump. Yeah. Why just say, I don't drink and neither can you. Yeah. And now we'll never meet. We'll never know. And that's, and that might be your life partner who is just like, uh, well, I'm on the fence. You know what? I don't have time for you know, this. this. I got 700 other chat messages to deal yes. with. Yes. Also, you and I, we've said many times on this podcast, we are not big drinkers, like hmm. at all. Like at most, maybe once a week at dinner, you'll get an IPA and yeah. I'll sip some of it. But my point is, is that we are both very light, like barely there drinkers. I drink even less than you and you hardly drink. I would still... I think if if I had a million options, all these guys are sliding into my DMs and I'm, you know, single and looking, I don't know if that's something that would make someone more appealing to me. I agree. I'm just being totally honest about that. And the next person might not feel that way, but why take that chance? Why wow. take the chance? You know, I went into this one thinking that I was I had changed my answer, but you have pulled me to your side okay. after we've hash this one out. I don't think I pulled you to my side. I think you were always there. I think you just wanted to have the other opinion. <laughs> That might be a little true. I feel like it it sounds better to have the other opinion. It like, does. Own it, it. Like, you don't drink. Like, be proud. But, like, but, I want to give that advice. But, I just, I'm thinking in the best interests of the people dating and looking and what will get them the highest success rate. But everything has to be looked through the lens of the online experience now. Yeah. If you asked me this same question 30 years ago, yeah. I'd say, yeah. <laughs> Make say in the first ten minutes, tell them you don't drink. Yeah, I don't care. Totally, you're in person. You can talk. You can have a, a. You have a billion different directions you can go with this conversation. Eye contact, touching. You know what's going on. There's yeah. no passive aggressiveness. There's no confusion. There's no mystery texts. You know what's going on. Online, you can't take those risks anymore. Yeah. If you want to meet someone cute, as we say in person, tell them you don't drink right out of the gate. Who cares? Yeah. They're right there to discuss it with you. Yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. online, do not say anything on your profile that's going to completely eliminate possibilities for you that you might actually have been receptive to. Yeah. Unless or, it's an absolute no deal, deal breaker. breaker. Yes. Okay. All no, right. Wait, I, went, I went on the wrong rhythm. <laughs> that was my fault. Absolute you did it right. Absolute yeah. deal breaker. <laughs> yeah. You were right, as usual. <laughs> Musically, you, you got the edge there. All right. Thank you, B, for your question. I, I hope... I, I I don't know if she, that's what she wanted to hear. I've just, I think that's I, what she wanted to hear. I think it was a great question. It's a great question. Yeah. Because time changes so fast now oh. that even, what was this, three years ago? Yeah. Three years can make a world of difference. Yeah. Ten years ago, I could have said things right now, right now into this microphone. Mm-hmm. I could have said things that people would have been like, eh, it's a little offensive, but who cares? Yeah. Now I say that. Forget about our it. Our podcast is over. Yeah. Yeah. Ten so, years. I honestly think it's like every year, 10% whatever the 10 percent more acceptable to not drink or socially cool yeah. to not drink 10 percent harder to date online 10 percent more offensive than it was the year before yeah and i think it's hockey sticking i think oh, it's yeah. like an accelerated like a like a, a regression definitely line. with the offensiveness all right b you don't you don't need luck this wasn't a good luck okay thanks <laughs> But good luck anyway. Yeah, good luck. Who yeah. doesn't want luck? It's a new year. We all need some luck. <laughs> all right. This next question is from m as in the as letter. In the letter. <laughs> Dear Shandy, I, 32 female, have a wonderful mother in law, 60 female. She's been in my life for five plus years. We love spending time together, have a lot in common, and we visit as often as we can, living several hours apart. Here's the problem she calls me at least once a week just to catch up, and I hate talking on the phone. I don't just mean I don't like talking on the phone, I truly dread it, and it makes me genuinely anxious and miserable. Anyone else who is close to me knows that I hate it and respects that. So this is a 
situation exclusive to her as she loves talking and talks to her closest friends and family members on the phone daily. The call typically lasts 30 minutes to an hour, and while they are pleasant conversations, they take a lot out of me. I have to socialize and talk on the phone a lot for work, so on my weekends and when I get home in the evenings, I just need silence, solitude, and routine. These calls have been so time-consuming and disruptive that now my stomach drops every time my phone rings and I can feel myself becoming more unpleasant with every conversation. (laughs) I know it sounds crazy, but these seemingly simple phone calls with a person I love and respect have started causing genuine stress. I have tried to hint around this issue. I don't always answer her calls. I will typically follow up with a text letting her know that I had a long day and I am not up for talking, but then I know I have to eventually call back and it just lingers over me. She also knows I am an introvert and that I am drained come evening time, but that doesn't seem to deter her. My husband has offered to tell her she calls too much, but something about that makes me feel awful. Here's my question. How do I let her know I cannot stand talking on the phone without hurting her feelings? Do I let my husband tell her? Do I tell her myself? Or is there a passive, less confrontational way to make it more clear? I truly love her and appreciate our close relationship, but feeling forced to do something I absolutely despise is taking its toll on me. Again, I know it's just a weekly phone call in the grand scheme of things, but it's making me slightly miserable. I would love your advice, M. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a very, it's a very current question. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's something I think many, many, many people feel. Yeah. And I mean, we have to first pay attention to the good thing here, which is that she actually likes her mother-in-law. Yes. Her mother-in-law actually likes her enough to call her once a week. Like not every daughter-in-law, mother-in-law situation is like that. So yeah. I think that that's the, a beautiful thing to start uh, off absolutely. with. Absolutely. I'm glad you said that. That's true. Um, so this is one of, this is a very, very first world problem. Oh my yeah. God. I mean, yes. This is about as low as it gets, <laughs> yeah. but not, not, not a gets question. It's a good question. No. And, I and could... it's, it's pervasive. I think most people, especially of a certain generation, actually several generations, yeah. like, I mean, basically anyone under 40, I'd say under like 50. Don't, doesn't want to talk on the phone. Doesn't really like talking on the phone. To be honest with you, I don't really like it either. I actually get anxiety about phone calls, like 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 required phone calls. Mm. I get some anxiety if they're going to be long calls. It's when it's going to be long. I have to prepare long. myself because I think there's something else to unpack here. Okay. And, and I'm not saying with her, like, yes, with her, uh-huh. M. M. But also like 60% of the population, if not more. <laughs> okay. So the thing to unpack is that when I was a kid, talking on the phone was so normal. Yeah. It was just like... Of course you're going to talk on the phone unless you see each other in person, which, you know, isn't that often. You're going to talk on the phone and you, and you deal with it. But now I think we've been so trained to be like it's either in person, like face to face or it's text. text yeah. Like Email, the, text, something typed. Yeah. And I think that the the human body and brain needs to adapt to that mode of, of communication um, by, by meaning to adapt. I think let me reverse that. I think the human <laughs> person, the being that we are, has, yeah. has adapted yes. to that mode of communication. It's either texting, totally Im- like impersonal is not really true. It's it's like in it's phys- removed. physically and uh, auditorily. I think it's I think it's a little impersonal. It's impersonal. Yeah, because yeah. you take away the voice, yes. which is a huge part of it. I mean, what you're saying is now being typed instead of said. So tone is all a new thing. You, you take away to- everything. I mean, how many times? Who like raise your hand if you have ever misinterpreted a text or had one of your texts misinterpreted? I mean, the, if if our shandies were in our living room, everyone would be raising their hands. So I do think it's a little more impersonal. It's totally impersonal. I mean, I would always picture animals. Like imagine two like two beavers communicating. <laughs> okay. There's like one is like they're they're up on each other, you know, hitting their paddles. Wait, I don't know. Do they rub paddles? Do beavers rub paddles? Why are you calling it a paddle? It's a tail. No, but it's a, it looks like a paddle. A beaver's tail is like a paddle. Yeah, but wait, is that something they do? Is like rub their their tails? I like would a- assume beavers do a lot of tail action. Like there's a lot. Of, <laughs> yeah. Wait, is this something you've spent time thinking about? Just recently. Like recently, as in the last like ten the seconds. Last, the last, yeah, somewhere between ten and thirty seconds. <laughs> Uh, but now I'm coming to the conclusion that there's definitely some some pretty hot and heavy tail paddle action. I mean, there's beavers. a lot of surface area to work with. Yeah. The thing is, I don't know if maybe it would mean that much as a beaver because I feel like with all that surface area and they use it quite a bit, it's probably not that sensitive. Hmm. But then what part of a beaver is sensitive? They got those little short I feel like legs. it's underbelly. Maybe you're right. So maybe they rub the underbelly with their paddle. 
<laughs> so, Andy, it's a new year. It is. What comes along with a new year? New year's resolutions. Mm-hmm. And maybe one of your resolutions is to up your skincare game. You want new skin. Well, that it sounds sound weird. You can go to Apostrophe, which is a wonderful platform that connects you with board certified dermatologists. And that's a game changer. You no longer need to go to the dermatologist to get prescription topical or oral medication for your skin. And who wants to do that? Who really wants to do that? Yeah. And I've had dermatologists in my day and I didn't I didn't look forward to it, honestly. Even as much as I liked them, it's a it's like Oh, it's like a third of your day spent doing that, especially in this city. Plus maybe a third of your checkings account because it costs a lot to go to the dermatologist. (laughs) You really rolled into that one. What else is it a third of? (laughs) So with apostrophe, you fill out their online consultation where you take selfies of your skin. Do you like my selfie motion? Yeah, you do it well. And you type out what your skincare concerns are. And maybe that is aging. Maybe it's acne. Maybe it is... Fine lines and wrinkles. Fine lines, wrinkles. And then a board certified dermatologist will review your information and then prescribe you something if you need it. And then that is delivered directly to your door. To the door. To the door. You don't need to then go to the pharmacy to pick up your prescription. And everyone knows. I mean, that's that's another third of your day. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Every time I go to the pharmacy, my pharmacy, there is a line. I go out of my way to go either early in the morning or late at night because otherwise it really is a third of my day. And then you have to do a third of the things you had to do <laughs> earlier in the day, later in the day. Let's not forget, butt knee is one third of butt knee, <laughs> chest knee, and back knee. So we have a very special deal for our audience, the Shandies. Right now, you can get your first visit with an apostrophe provider for only $5, one third of $15. <laughs> when you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and enter promo code Shandy, that is a savings of $15. And this offer is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click get started. Then use our code Shandy at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Jenny Kane, Jenny Kane, Jenny Kane, Jenny Kane, Jenny Kane, <laughs> Jenny Kane, Jenny Kane. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't need lyrics because Jenny Kane stands alone. Ooh. And I'm not JK. <laughs> what is Jenny Kane, Andy? Jenny Kane is just about the best sweater you're ever going to have. It should be. If you have a better sweater, you're a dick. So Jenny Kane, we have called I've Made It Clothes before yeah. because they have nice clothes. Oof. Let me tell you, when nice. I wear my, I'm wearing Jenny Kane right now, my cashmere cocoon cardigan i have this in three colors and let me tell you so we were on this trip recently we went down under to australia new zealand and i brought two out of three of my cashmere cocoon cardigans and that was it for sweaters that i brought it's summer there right and i was like that's all i'm gonna need at most i brought the black one and the oatmeal one and it ended up being kind of cold we miscalculated the weather there oh yeah and i survived with these two sweaters over and over again one day in new zealand i even layered them on each other Ooh, do you, you remember you that double jenny k i, I double jenny k well You've really made it then <laughs> <laughs> well let me tell you it worked I did not need anything more. It kept me warm, but it felt light. That's my biggest peeve is when I'm packing. A trip like that is a long way. And it was a long time. We were gone for three weeks. I need something light, light weight that is also going to keep me warm, but isn't going to be like half of my suitcase. These are the most versatile cardigans I have ever owned. And I never got tired of seeing you in those Jenny Kane sweaters. Oh, really? They never got old. I mean, I wore them pretty much every day. Yeah. One or the other or both. And that really speaks to all of Jenny Kane's pieces, truly. They understand less is more and that minimalism can go a hell of a lot further in your wardrobe than, you know, something. Max Maximalism. <laughs> maximalism. <laughs> maximalism. Actually, it's a little chilly right now and I think I'm missing something. <laughs> ah. So find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners, the Shandies, get 15% off your first order when you use code DEARSHANDY at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code DEARSHANDY. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. (laughs) Anyway, the point is, is that I think that, that, that with beavers, there's a lot of rubbing and paddle action. And then there's there's sounds. There what beavers chirp. I don't know what they do. There's they're talking to each other from a distance. Yeah. And then that's good too. You know, they're like, okay, rah, rah, 
you know, there's a little fish over here. Or there's a stick I want. And then imagine two beavers texting. Like they don't know what it means. They look at the screen, even if they have the phones in their hand, they look at the screen. There's just, there's nothing. It's yeah. like they see nothing. Yeah. It's just gibberish. Okay. There's, there's no animal communication. Meaning yeah. the only reason that we can understand what's going on when two people are texting is because we have this advanced language yeah. and Brain. understanding of light and imagery. Yeah. Like we're so much smarter than a beaver. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is my point here. Okay. But that's not in any way a real form of communication. Mm -hmm. There's no physical, there's no smell, mm -hmm. there's no there's no mannerisms, there's no sound. Yeah. There's n there's no environment. Uh. It's it's like the lowest form of communication that we only can do because we are so advanced. Yeah. So when you strip away all of that stuff, you're left with really nothing. Uh. So we have adapted as humans to two modes, as I said. One is absolutely no animal interaction it's yeah. purely like a scientific Logistics. yeah even if it's emotionally if it's like i love you so much i want to touch yeah, you it's, like it still it's doesn't so, have the emphasis it's so diluted it, if someone is like professing feelings or something especially for the first time and it's over text I mean, yeah, it's it, you, you're telling me that's as powerful as in person. Of course. And how many times no. have you had? And I know Shandy's will be nodding their heads to this. How many times have you had those kind of intro conversations in a relationship? And then you meet in person. And you're like, what uh, happened to the texting guy? Where, yeah. where is that guy? It's a different person. There's nothing. There's coldness here. Y yeah. And then you have to talk on the phone. Yeah. That <laughs> mode of communication is stressful because our body and minds have been detrained to understand how to deal with it. I guess I agree somewhat. I feel like there is like a flexing, right? Like you said, there was a time where all you did was talk on the phone. I remember talking to my friends on the phone when okay. like I was like in high school yeah. and it wasn't a bother. And in fact, I will say to this day, when I talk on the phone to someone, to a friend who I haven't seen in a while, it is so much more meaningful. Honestly, sometimes even more than like FaceTiming or Zooming or Skyping, because it just feels so in real time and like old school and like you really connect without the distractions of the visuals. This is a tough one because it's her mother-in-law. This isn't just someone that she's like, oh, I have to do this once in a while. Like she actually loves her mother-in-law. So you don't think that she should tell her husband that she that she wants her to call less? That's a big move. Yeah. It's not worth it, I don't think. There's a lot of things that I think in life you should do, even though it takes some discomfort and awkwardness. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is worth it. Yeah. I think maybe it's better for M to look inward and see why she's so uncomfortable with this and what's making her not like it, even though she enjoys the company of her mother-in-law and enjoys... Um, talking to her and her presence in her life. At the beginning, you said that you felt a, a, there was a real question. So that's what you think the real question I is. I think the real question is, is why do I feel this way? The why is much more important than the how do I extricate myself or change this? Mm -hmm. Because I think that she probably, it's either a distraction thing where she's like, I want to be, if I'm not with the person face to face. And this again gets to my point. I just don't think we're trained for this mode of communication mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. If I don't see this person face to face and I'm committed, like this is my time with my mother-in-law where we're sitting here and all we have is each other, then I want to be doing other things while I'm talking. Like I feel like I'm, I, I want to be doing other things. Like I don't want to just be on the phone. Okay. Like I have my life. I don't see this person in front of me. I want to I'm distracted. I think that's the root of it. Okay. It's a distraction thing. It's like, if I'm not with you, then what, I want to be doing point? other things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Like, I don't want to just be sitting with the phone to my ear, talking to this person I can't see. That's my feeling about it. I've thought about this a lot. In life? I've thought about this exact question. Oh, really? Because I don't like talking on the phone either now. Oh. And I really don't. I look, I dread it sometimes. Like if I have to talk to someone on the phone, I sometimes like, ah. And then finally when I'm on the phone, it's like, it's fine. Yeah. But I still, it's like, I feel fidgety. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I'm not sure what to say sometimes. And there's like, mm. I feel like I need to fill space sometimes. Like I'm just not, I'm there. not crazy about it. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, she had four paragraphs, two to three of which were really going to detail about like the anxiety it causes her. And I want to give her the advice to draw a boundary, don't do something you don't want to do and like make, th make this as communicative as you want it to be. But I'm, I find myself struggling to give that advice just because 
the the only way to achieve that is through the discomfort. She has to be willing to do that. And I don't have any issue with her asking her husband to do it because, you know, he is the son. Like, I think that it, it's a good buffer. But I just, you have to be prepared, M, for this to not land well because yeah. you're talking to someone from a generation where she wants to feel close to you. I am sure she would rather talk to you every day than once a week. That's what I'm saying. And if it was every day, then this question would yes. have a different tone. Totally. Then there'd have to be action taken. Totally. I think once a week, and her dreading it, I, I kind of feel like this is a bit of a shift your mindset yeah. thing and maybe go in with a little more, not to like hashtag gratitude, but a little more feeling grateful that you have this relationship and how great it is that she wants to communicate with you this much. I know that's not the answer you wanted to hear. I just feel like this isn't necessarily worth hurting someone. You will hurt her. Yeah. She will be hurt. She'll be hurt. It'll be unnecessary it will, hurt. It will feel personal yeah. to her mother-in-law. If she didn't like her mother-in-law, the relationship wasn't great, then I would give a totally different answer here. And I totally want you to like have your boundaries. And so maybe those days when you text her and you're like, I had a really busy day, I'm fried, I can't. You know, maybe wait till next week to call her back or let her call you back. Maybe l lessen that sense of obligation by one full notch. Sure. But otherwise, you know, as an adult, especially socially, you do a lot of things you don't want to do. Yeah. Period. It's sort of like that's kind of what being an adult is some of the time. Not all the time, no. but some of the time. And you can't always expect every single relationship you have in your life to fit in the exact way you want it to. Yes. Because there's another human being, an autonomous human being with their own wants. And like I said, I'm sure if it were up to the mother-in-law, she'd be talking a hell of Every a lot day. more than they already are. And, and I will say this as well. I think it's a luxury to have a mother-in-law that likes you this much, that wants to talk to you every week, and that you actually like too. This can't be said for many people in this country and the world. Yeah. So be grateful for that. I'm not trying to put this on you, like be grateful for this. Yeah. <laughs> but, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. No, that's not how we feel at all, truly. No, like, I, I, I feel her pain in this, yeah, especially I feel as an introvert. Every, everyone feels her pain. Yes. We all know what this is. Yes. But there are a lot of good things here. And I do think, I really think that you should look at this half hour call a week as your therapy session. Why am I so uncomfortable with this? Why does this make me stressed out? Mm -hmm. Why do I not look forward to this? Why do I dread this? What am I doing on this phone call? What am I saying? Am I saying, am I filling the space with needless words? Maybe be quiet on the phone. Maybe don't say as much. Maybe sit and listen and let the empty space be there. Yeah. If you feel yourself giving a lot in the conversation, yeah. you could just try to receive a bit. Yeah. Like see how you could change the dynamic of the conversation so it's less draining. And I think the draining is exactly what this is. I think you should focus on that and say, why is this draining me? Mm -hmm. If you take away the energy that you're giving to these conversations, then maybe it won't be draining. Maybe if you just say, you know what, the stakes aren't that high. Like if I don't have a lot of interesting things to say or if it seems like I'm not engaging that much, it's not my fault. Like, yeah. it's not a problem. It's not, my mother-in-law is not going to like me less or I'm not going to disappoint her. It's not an issue. Just let the amount of energy you give to the conversations go down like 50%. Yeah. And, and suit how you're feeling in that moment. Yeah. You don't need to perform. I think that's key because I can feel like maybe she gives more than she actually has in yeah. that moment. And that's why she's so drained because she feels right. the it's need a to be on. Yeah, it's it is like, a performance. Oh, it's like once a week for a half hour, yes. she has to do a 30 minute one man show. <laughs> totally. And, and instead, just why don't you be an audience member at the one man show yeah. and then see how it feels. And, you know, if she says at the end of that call, like, wow, you really didn't talk that much. I feel a lot of hostility, you know, then, well, then <laughs> you can you address could say, that. Then yeah. there's a problem. Well, no, but no, it's not a problem. That's amazing because then you can be like, well, actually, I find talking on the phone kind of draining and I just, right. I'm just really tired right now. But like, I, I didn't want to miss connecting with no, you. No, I so. meant there's a problem that can now be addressed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, I 100% I okay. agree with We're you. We're on the same page. M, you can let these phone calls with your mother-in-law be your teacher. Yes. Yes. This is very, this is very new age and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great question. I actually, when I started hearing this question, I was like, eh. And I was like, wait, this is a big it's question. It's a juicy There's one. There's so much here. As a matter of fact, we, I could go on for like three or four hours yeah, with this. we're not going to do that. But and yeah. already I feel like it's been long-winded. Yeah. <laughs> but there's more here than this question. There's yes. a lot. It, this goes deep mm -hmm. and it gets to the real psychological core 
of what people are going through nowadays. Yeah. And the distraction. The struggle of having to talk to someone <laughs> once a week for a half hour who loves you. No, but seriously, it's more than it appears. This question is more than it appears. Yeah. I want you to think about this. I want everyone to think about yeah, this. Same. Everyone who is in this position, which is like probably more than half of our Shandies, mm -hmm. I want you to think of why, how, and and what you can do who? to take away who. When, who is more why, all, what? All of the questions, all of the words that have a question mark. Where? How do you make the energy of these interactions go down. Oh, the oh, the energy output. Yes. Yeah. What you give Take to it. it. Down. Yeah. It's not a performance. Not a performance. Yeah. Okay. Good luck, M. I think you kind of need it. No. Yeah. But you know, that's that's okay. That's life. Yeah. The downside is you have to talk to your mother in law for a half hour once a week. Oh, fair so, enough. So, so some when people you, when risk you, their lives. <laughs> when you put it like that. All right. I could go with that for the whole day. Oh, you could have talked about the that. The whole day. I just realized suddenly I was like, oh shit, there's so much here. Yeah. It's an existential question. It's oh. a it's a it's a question about how we are as a race right now. Yeah. And it's about our interaction with humans in the age of technology. Of technology. I mean, technology is an understatement. Yeah. In the age of basically we're cyborgs now. Yeah. We're fo the phone is a part of our physicality. Oof. Oh, Andy. Wow. Isn't that ironic? Isn't that ironic that in an age where the thing called a smartphone. Yes. The thing, the thing that's called a phone. Yes. The thing is, and we're, we're better connected than ever before. Yeah. The phone is the thing that everyone, you go into the deepest jungles in the most undiscovered parts of planet Earth and you say phone. So it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we know, we know about the phone, the uh -huh. iPhone, of course. Yet, we don't talk on the phone anymore yeah. unless it's absolutely necessary. We use it for just about everything but, including order, ordering it's, meals it's, for delivery, buying stuff online. It's unbelievable. Seeing the weather. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. It just struck me. The phone. And we still call it a phone. Oh, yeah. We don't call it a tablet yeah. or a little tiny computer thing. It's so true. You're, you're like, where's my machine? phone? I don't know where my phone yeah. is. Where's my texter? Yeah. Where's my texter? <laughs> no, it's my phone. Wow. Good. And we don't talk on it. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, good food for thought, Andy. Wow, I'm excited by how excited you got by that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Sneaky. It's a yes. sneaky one. Yes. So she got a lot more than she bargained for there. <laughs> like, I just wanted a yes or no answer. <laughs> I just wanted you to tell me to tell yeah, my yeah, mother-in-law yeah. to Stop back off. Stop calling your mother. <laughs> just tell your mother-in-law to fuck off. <laughs> All right. This next question is from C, as in not the letter she wrote with a smiley face. It, she actually signed it. S-E-A. Dear Shandy, love the podcast. I'm a big fan. Listen to them all. Been a fan of Charlene since The Bachelor, etc., etc. Thank you, C. <laughs> my dilemma involves myself, 38-year-old woman, and three others in our late 30s living outside of big coast cities. Over 10 years ago, I was dating someone and we had two friends who were also a couple. We were all close and when I broke up with my ex, we, for a lack of a better word, switched. <laughs> So my current partner used to date my ex's current partner. So they were like two. <laughs> I don't know why this is so hard for me. So, so just visually so they just show switched. me what's happening. They just went like, like they. <laughs> that was good. I got it. <laughs> you that, got, that, I yeah, got they that. switched partners. So she. So it'd be like if, if, so you and me are dating. Yeah. And my friend Joe is dating some other girl. Yeah. And, and then I we start broke dating up. the girl yeah, that Joe's and dating. And I started and Joe dating Joe. Joe dating you. Yes. And, but we were friends to begin with. Yeah. We were friends as like a couple. And so now we just switch. Yeah. And then we're okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what else is oh, here. Oh, that's a little weird. I mean, I, I applaud them. But yeah. that, that's like really, that's advanced. I love the wording of it. She was like, we were all close. And when I broke up with my ex, we, for a lack of a better word, switched. <laughs> <laughs> so they're basically swinging without the relationship. <laughs> no, without. Wait, they're, they they're, are swinging. They're swinging permanently. Yeah, it's like a permanent. They swing. they swung. They swung and done. To the dilemma. I broke up with my ex because he was a narcissist. We aren't friends with the couple anymore for that reason. But my spouse still wants to see them from time to time when they come into town. I do not. My spouse and the other couple would like to be friends, but the only reason I see them is because I don't want to be the person that forbids their partner from being friends with their ex. I have no problem if they are friends, but it's hard 
hard for me to be friends without having to see my controlling ex. This is the part where I promise you I'm not testing a screenplay. This really is my life. My question is twofold. How do I navigate allowing my spouse to see his ex without having to see my own and protecting my mental health? Also, how do I reconcile the guilt I feel for allowing a friend to date my ex? I've had therapy, but your podcast a few months back on narcissism reminded me of how narcissists can't change. I'll link the episode here with Dr. Romani. She was amazing. Yes. I feel guilty that I might have been able to warn her, but now she's in too deep. They have two kids. Maybe I send her a link to your narcissist podcast anonymously. They're in town suddenly, so the issue is back. Any advice is appreciated. Okay. Wow. Wow. This is a lot to unpack. Yeah, there. yeah. It's a complicated one. First of all, I have never heard of this in my life. I've <laughs> never heard even anecdotally of this happening. The switching. I've never yeah, I've never heard of this. Yeah. This is unprecedented. <laughs> think about that. Think put yourself in the shoes of of her and think about how unusual that would be. Yeah. And it sounds like he he wants to stay friends with his ex. Yeah. But it, what's interesting, it doesn't sound like he's really friends with the guy. Yeah. So this is a really interesting situation where both parties don't like the other person, but in one case, it's the the partner of the <laughs> ex, and in the other case, it's the ex of the person. <laughs> this is really, this is going to be, we have to use like, can, can we get a board out here, like a whiteboard? <laughs> it's like a football strategy Yeah, board. this one is shockingly confusing considering there's only four parties. You know, as complicated as this sounds, I don't know if, the answer is that complicated. I think I know where you're going with the answer. It's, it's the answer I feel as well. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. I just feel like, first of all, amazing. See that you have your limit and your boundaries. Yeah. I think a lot of people in this situation might feel pressured. It's like, well, we were when we were dating in this arrangement, we were friends. So now that we're dating in this arrangement, we should still be friends. And not necessarily, you know, like things change and you grow and you learn and you left that guy for a reason. And it sounds like that was a great move for you. And we're going to get to the guilt about the friend in a yeah. minute. But but my point being, I just don't think that she owes anything more than letting her husband hang out with them on his own. I don't think she needs to be there. If I was dating, if I was dating, well, I'm dating. I mean, we're dating. <laughs> okay. And it was a couple that we really liked. Uh-huh. And I really liked you, but we just had some sort of life differences where like you wanted to go off to this place and I wanted to do this and we just couldn't see eye to eye, but we really liked each other uh -huh. and we did the switch. I would still want to be hang out with this couple. Yeah, yeah. But if you were one of like an ex-girlfriend where I was just like, this, uh, this is horrible. This is toxic. Yeah. I can't wait to be out of this. And it still hurts when you're out of it, but I want to be out of this. I would never want to see them. I'm realizing that there's something missing from this email. Like, how does her husband feel about this? It sounds like maybe she's being pressured into doing it. I'm wondering how vocal she's been with her partner about the fact that she doesn't want to see her toxic ex, hmm. her narcissist ex. Or just, you know, It sounds like it was a painful time for her. I just feel like this is kind of a non-issue as long as she's just straight up about that. And if he has a problem with that and pressures her into going just so he can see his ex, then things are weird. I'm yeah. sorry, they are. Yeah. Like if, at that point, you're sacrificing your partner's comfort socially so that you can hang out with your ex. He should just see his ex one-on-one. -on -one. I think she should just make an excuse when they're in town and not see them. And she could text the friend directly and be like, hey, do you want to get coffee just us two to catch up or whatever? She can... Um, what? How do you do the two birds with one stone now? That's, oh, that's you humanitarian. Can, you can feed two birds with one scone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm, that doesn't hit the same, but I'll do it. Feed two birds with one scone. Uh -huh. She can basically say, I'm not super comfortable doing this and I, I'd like to just not yeah. see you guys. And in the same sentence, uh -huh. she's basically saying to her friends, Yeah. Is based, she's basically saying, watch out. Okay, so let's address the guilt she feels about her friend. So she feels that she could have prevented her friend from being in a relationship with her narcissist ex, and now that she's in too deep, they've got two kids, blah, 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 it's too late. You know? That's not her problem. This is not her problem. I, I strongly feel, see that, you know, your friend is a consenting adult, and you don't know the dynamic of their relationship. This is just the honest to God truth. You know, like, I'm not saying that your, your narcissist ex is suddenly not a narcissist with your friend, but you truly cannot know what goes on between two people in a relationship and in a family unit. No one knows except for the people in it. This is, so this is a you, classic example of like what suits you doesn't necessarily suit someone else. Like yeah. maybe 
her being with this narcissist mm -hmm. in her mind. And I'm not saying, who knows? Maybe this guy, I'm not discrediting her feelings that he's a narcissist. Yeah. But maybe he's not fully a narcissist. Maybe narcissistic tendencies came out in this relationship, mm -hmm. which this relationship was toxic for yeah. some reason. It's like if I take just one anchovy and eat it just yeah. out of the blue. I'm like, I'm like, oh, it's like three in the afternoon. I'm going to have one single anchovy. Okay. It's going to be a little, uh, unless you love anchovies, it's going to be a little gross. Yeah. But if you mix that into a Caesar salad oh, really? dressing. A high-end Caesar oh, salad. Suddenly that anchovy is amazing. Yeah. So maybe she was just having an anchovy and her friend is having a Caesar salad. <laughs> I mean, that's the optimistic way of, look, of looking at it. and But it's also totally possible. In some ways, I think it's just as possible as him being, you know, not not a great partner or whatever. Yeah. But the point is, C, is that this is not your responsibility. I feel like this is very, it's a very female thing to do, is to somehow make someone else's choices. And it sounds like it's been years. I mean, they have two kids. This sounds like the, the switch, the big switch happened a long time ago. Maybe well, she's super happy. Yeah. And if she hasn't come to her, if she came to her and said, hey, friend, yeah, see, yeah. I'm really having trouble with your ex. Which like, I feel like she would have mentioned. She would have mentioned that. Definitely. She's making believe. She's making up the story yeah. that her ex, her friend is having trouble with her ex because yeah. she had trouble with her ex. Maybe they're super happy and it just works for some but reason. But even if they're not. You can't you can't take that on. Like you're being too, too empathetic. empathic. Yeah. Yeah. She's a hard is empath. Is it empathic or empathetic? They're both they both empathetic. Work. Empathic? She's an empath and she's being empathetic. No, it's not empathic. I don't think so. <laughs> now I don't know. I feel like you were delicately being like, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The point is, is that you're taking on too much guilt. This is not your problem. You need to let that go there comes a point where you got to look out for number one yeah she has made her bed let her sleep in it there's no point looking Abs back on what you could have done is, differently this is the most clear-cut advice yeah. of all if she comes to you and asks your help with the situation then you can give that's your different. thoughts that's yeah. totally different but if she hasn't forget about it this is what some people in the maybe the yoga community would call an energetic leak uh, <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is a leak you've got a leak you a, 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 yeah. out of your balloon and it's this you gotta you gotta patch, patch up. up the leak if you want to see your friend you see your friend solo if your partner wants to see his ex you, they see each other solo you don't have to make excuses you just don't do it yeah you can either make it clear or you just don't do it that's it she's not your problem don't feel guilt this is this is also, clean slate uh, just to wrap she's 38 everyone in the story is in their late 30s it's time yeah it's time. Like, I feel the guilt seeping. It's leaking. The yeah. energetic leak of this email through my iPad. I feel it. And I just want to, like, cut it loose for you. Let yeah, it go. Enough. That's not your burden to carry any longer. Let this chapter of your life be the chapter where you don't take on other people's problems yes. as your own. Yes. Okay. This is high school. Yeah. This is just an extension of high school. You you graduated from high school. And if you didn't, you're, you're still not the age where you'd be going to high school. I'm not <laughs> judging you, but <laughs> I don't know what your education history is. <laughs> but high school time is over. <laughs> All right, see, good luck. It sounds like you might need it a little bit, but honestly, I think the answer to your complicated question is very clear and yes. simple to us anyway. All right. But kudos on this this swap. Yeah, yeah. It's really impressive. Very advanced. Yeah. So Charlene, getting home from three weeks away in a beautiful place is a very, very difficult experience. Yes, we're a little down. But one thing that made it a little brighter, mm -hmm. HelloFresh. Yes, I arranged that a HelloFresh box would be almost waiting for us. The day after we returned, we had HelloFresh arrive. Cooking dishes, when you are just assembling all the ingredients yourself and coming up with what to cook, is a bit of a nightmare when you've been cooked for for three weeks. Yeah. And HelloFresh is a meal delivery kit. I feel like everyone should know about HelloFresh by now, but they basically deliver all the ingredients for a dish to your door along with the recipe to make said dish and it takes out a lot of the groundwork you know what it does it takes out all the stuff that's not fun yes and gives you all the fun stuff you know chopping vegetables is a therapeutic thing mm -hmm. it's actually sometimes the best part of my day oh that's oh. not a good yeah that's not a saying oh, a lot Andy, you just, <laughs> this is supposed to be a positive yeah. moment <laughs> i mean recently i have some really bad jet lag recently. <laughs> okay. it's a good point like i actually don't find cooking to be unpleasant it's the planning it's the 
out of the sky, just being like, this is what I'm going to make today. And do I have the ingredients on hand? Or, oh, I'm missing that ingredient. I have to go buy that. What a pain. When you take out all of that legwork and you're just in the kitchen with everything on hand, it actually is kind of enjoyable. And it's been cooking classes for us, as we've said before. I've learned how to cook a lot of things because of HelloFresh. And I never get sick of HelloFresh. Was there over 45 meals to choose from? Yes. And all these fun add-ons. I love the add-ons, especially when we're on the road. Like when we're on the road for an opera, they have these like egg these egg white bites that you can have in the morning they have dessert add-ons remember those lava cakes yeah they're really good and we are both very discerning when it comes to lava cakes we like them very lava so go to hellofresh.com slash shandy free and use code shandy free to get free breakfast for life that's one breakfast item per box while subscription is active that's free breakfast for life with code shandy free at hellofresh.com slash shandy free so charlene yes i watched a koala bear eat some bamboo in australia Uh uh-huh which was very exciting. Yes. And the first thing I thought was, that's what my pants are made of. <laughs> Your cozy earth lounge pants that you're wearing right now and that you wore every single day. You wore those on the plane. I wore these on about 50 hours of flight. Yeah, yeah. And they were amazing. Yes. Felt like I was naked. <laughs> <laughs> which is exactly what you want. But yes, Cozy Earth products are made from viscose from bamboo, making them not only unbelievably soft and unbelievably strong, but also highly sustainable and responsibly sourced, which also matters. I mean, whenever you think about bed sheets and how much fabric that is, I want to know that that's being responsibly sourced. And you know, we, we had a lot of good hotel pillows on our trip. Mm-hmm. Hotels make a good pillow. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, a nice hotel When they make it good, they make it good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oftentimes I'll come home and be like, ah, these pillows, what is this? But not this time. No. I came home, laid my head on that Cozy Earth pillow, and it was heaven. Yes, your Cozy Earth silk pillow. That pillow has changed your life. It's the best pillow I've ever had. No question. And we've said this before. We'll say it again. Oprah. Oprah. Oprah, who cannot be bought because she is, you know, she's She's, Oprah. She's got some dough. Yeah, she's got some dough. Cozy Earth products have been on her favorite things list for five years years in a row. Different products every year. It's unbelievable. you know what? They'll be on her favorite things list for the next 50 years. Yeah. Unless they mess up. Or unless she dies. (laughs) Five whopping years in a row. Different products every year. That means that it's not just one hero product. Although they're bed sheets. We talk about their bed sheets are just so unbelievable. You know, they they have a 100 night sleep trial. 100 nights. You could sleep on their sheet. For 99 nights and decide they're not for you and send them back. Although who would do that? A real dick. But also you're going to fall in love with the sheets. Yeah, yeah. You're a liar too. So if you've never tried Cozy Earth, we've got awesome news. (laughs) You can save up to 35% on Cozy Earth right now, but hurry, this offer will not last. Go to CozyEarth.com and enter promo code Shandy at checkout to save up to 35% off your first order. That's CozyEarth.com, promo code Shandy, CozyEarth.com. All right, this next question is from J as in the letter, and she actually wrote as in the letter. Dear Shandy, I've been a huge fan of your podcast for a while now. I love your banter and the balanced perspective you give in your Q&As. I have a question that's not exactly your standard Shandy topic, but I know you'll provide some good insight and maybe other Shandys can chime in on this too. Thank you, Jay. I'm 32 and my husband is 36. We live in a suburb in the Midwest. We are thrilled to be having our second child, a girl, due in the spring. My husband would like our daughter's middle name to be after his deceased grandmother. I fully agree that his grandmother deserves the recognition and there's no one else I'm considering honoring. However, her name is one of my absolute least favorite names to the point that I would be embarrassed to tell people our child's middle name. Mm. Instead, I was hoping that we could use his grandmother's middle name instead of her first name. As luck would have it, her middle name is actually one of my favorite names. I suggested this, but my husband said he didn't even know his grandmother's middle name until I told him. So he doesn't associate it with her and doesn't seem interested in using it. My main question is, how should I proceed? Should I accept a name that I dislike as a trade-off for honoring a deserving family member? Or is my point valid and I should encourage my husband to consider using his grandmother's grandmother's middle name. I have a secondary hypothetical question. If my husband is still stuck on using the first name, then I'd like him to run this by his mom to get her input. His mom knew his grandmother the best and would be able to accurately weigh in on how we can recognize her. Admittedly, I think his mom would agree with my point, but I'm open to the possibility that she wouldn't and would take her opinion seriously. What do you think of this idea? Sincerely, Jay, as in the letter. And... She did include the names in 
in a PS, but she said she didn't want to risk offending anyone in case it was their okay, name. Okay, can I guess? If I get it right, I'm going to get two guesses. And if I get it right, then you get to say the name. You get two guesses? I get two guesses. Okay. And I want to make it Because I don't want to do that to her because she says I don't want to reveal the name in case it offends anyone. But it doesn't sound like she doesn't want to reveal the name because of like a privacy thing. But like, I I don't think people are going to be offended. I'm going to be the one who takes the offense. (laughs) Okay. I'm taking the burden. Okay. 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 And again, and I also want to caveat this as a secondary uh, perpetrator here. I don't necessarily don't like these names. I'm just thinking that she's the kind of person who wouldn't like this name. Okay. So, so pretty much I'm putting the blame back on her. So you're going to guess the first name, the name she doesn't like, yes. and the second name. The, no, the, the middle that's name. too hard. I'm just going to guess the first okay. name. Okay. Gertrude. No. You're going too hardcore. Oh. Jessica. No. Well, she's that's, a grandmother. Yeah, yeah. that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's not funny how a name it's such a moment oh, in time isn't that incredible it's amazing yeah names change names change sometimes you can look at someone's name just in writing and you're like oh they're probably around this age oh yeah I, and, I would say and that they're I probably could, like this like raised in this situation you, you it's could, unbelievable you could guess probably within I would say within 50 years of the last like 400 years you could guess almost within 50 years most of the time where some what time someone lived in anyway my point is is that um oh i didn't have a point you were guessing my second guess now is eileen no i have one more guess okay okay i want to get this um (laughs) get this diane no damn it that last one was the closest dinah (laughs) we're moving on damn it and by the way, I have nothing against those names. I just had a feeling that some people would have something against those names. Well, yeah, you're you're making an educated guess, which is that it's, you know, it's a grandmother who has passed away. It's her first name. She doesn't like the name. I assume it's because it feels dated or something. Yeah. Okay. So- Joan. <laughs> no, it's uh, not Joan. All right, fine. So do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. I think this is one of those things. First of all, middle name rarely comes up. Yeah. Like unless you're really like self-absorbed, you usually your middle name doesn't come into play. Mm -hmm. Unless you're like an artist. If you're one of those people, you know, who has their first initial, Mm -hmm. like a, you know, Michael Johnson, Uh you're just an idiot. (laughs) <laughs> like that's not acceptable, and and that's Wait. not going to come into play. Well, maybe the A that whatever A stands for you don't resonate with. I mean, some people do end up using their middle name in life for whatever reason. So I don't think that that's that crazy. I mean, I can think of a couple people in my life who go by their middle name. They just didn't like their first name, so they use their middle name. That's fine as their first name. Yeah. But I'm saying that generally speaking, this is not going to come into play. Yeah. I feel like the extent to which this might come up is... Passport. It's on her passport. Maybe if she's getting something monogrammed with like the three initials. Yeah, but then it's just initials. It's not the name anyway. Yeah. It's almost never going to come into play unless it's like a like a real like you're trying to identify someone like it's like a social security number uh-huh. or a date of birth it's not important okay. the middle name really isn't a thing that people are going to hear much uh-huh. so i don't think she should really care that much oh. personally and this is a matter of taste mm-hmm. like yes the name is probably most people would be like yeah that's not it's not great but a lot of people would be like i love that name names in general are very subjective yeah So she has a certain taste, and I think her approach is absolutely correct. She should put it on his mother and really press that. Be like, what do you think? What do you think? Uh And then if she agrees with her son, her partner, the the other husband, you know what I'm talking about, then it's over. Game, okay. game, set, match. She has yeah. to deal with it. Okay. And the, the consequences are so minute. Yeah, I'm torn on this one because like, obviously we've never been in this position and we've had, you know, a baby name question before. In fact, we called it our favorite Q&A question of 2022. Yeah. I will link the best of episode here. But the whole dog baby name thing, I was extremely passionate about the importance of a name and the amount of thought that goes into the name. But I have to say, I agree with your point about it being a middle name. And I think for a lot of people, the middle name is symbolic. It's not usually just like the prettiest name. And I feel like for them to take the grandmother's middle name is ends up being a sort of compromise that no one's really winning out on. 
like I know she loves the grandmother's middle name, but if it doesn't mean anything to her husband, who's the one who's like honoring his grandmother, then it's kind of like, what was the point? Yeah. So I want to give the advice that, you know, get the name, the exact name you want. But I, I think there is something beautiful about how her husband's really sticking to this. I think it's a very sentimental thing yes. to hear a grown man who's about to have a daughter. Like it's really quite, and it, it's his grandmother, you know, like yeah. it sounds like he like loves the women in his life. And there's something very sweet about him being like, no, like I want it to be that name. And by the way, I, I'm going to say, because she did include the name and I'm not going to reveal what the name is, but I personally don't think there's anything wrong with the name. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with the name. Can yeah. I just see the name? Can you show it to me? How about I'll add a part here and then I'll write J and I'll say, can we include the names? Okay. How about we just put this on a Patreon? <laughs> <laughs> For $5 a month, you can find out what the name is. Okay. So the first name that she, so this is the name she doesn't like is Donna. It's it's okay. You know what it is? I'll tell you something. As long as the first and last names are strong, it's like the the Caesar salad anchovy analogy. That name is an anchovy I think on that, its own. I, I think but the name, with the other good names, it's a Caesar salad. I, I think the name really works as a middle name, personally. Okay, this is the middle name of the grandmother and the name that Jay likes and wants to use. Mm -hmm. Lucy. See, I actually... I actually, can I be honest with you? I I'm going to be totally honest with yeah. you. I prefer the first yes. supposedly not good Me name. Me too. Yeah. I too. It has more flavor. I agree. I agree. <laughs> it has more flavor. It does. It's more unique. It's of a time. Yeah. It has meaning. It's an anchovy. Names are so subjective. I learned that with the dog baby name thing. Like we got such a heated, varied response to that. Some people really sided with you. Some people really sided with me. All I can do here is give my opinion. Yeah. The name doesn't bother me. I actually think it's a cool oh, middle it name. Is, it is a cool name. The only issue I would have actually with that middle name is if the first name rhymed with it. Oh, then yeah. I would have issues. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we've answered this one. I feel yeah. like this might not be the answer she was looking for. It's hard for me to separate the subjective answer, which is that like I, I have the names, right? Yeah. I have the names. And so I feel a certain way. And in, crucially, the dog baby name question, we didn't know the name. We never knew the name. We never knew never the name. Never knew it. Maybe that would have changed our answer. Sure. All right, Jay, good luck. I feel like you'll kind of need it. Sorry if this wasn't what you want to hear. You know, you could write a different podcast and they could totally agree with you and totally, you know, hate the name. So no. you you wrote us and this is our opinion. I'm curious to see what the Shandys say. Me too. Like, I feel like some people might take this in the direction of like principle and really, you know, she should love every name that she names her daughter, all that stuff. But I, I, I just can't remove the fact that I don't mind the name. I, in fact, and, like it. And I like old school names. All the Me names too. I listed... I actually like them. Oh. <laughs> Hedging. <Tell me. laughs> no, but I do. I really do. Names names are all about contrast too. Yeah, that's true. Like a new school name, old school name, new school name, get a little sandwich going there. Oh, I actually think if they're all new school. Yeah, then it's like, oh, okay. Okay. So you're yeah, just talk trendy. About a moment you're in on time. trend with yeah, your yeah. names. <laughs> Mix it up. Yeah. Mix and match. Something new, something old, something blue. Oh, and for what it's worth... Jay, I don't even have a middle name. And my middle name is just, I never think about it. Yeah. It's honestly, a, if put on the spot, if I had a few drinks, someone asked me, I honestly would forget for a second. Yeah. And I, your middle name is super big. Generic. It's just a yeah. whatever name. It's, not, it's a nice generic name. I don't care. It makes, it's never come up in my life in any other way than, oh, you have a middle name? Okay, let's move on. Yeah. I wonder if maybe middle names mean more to different people in different parts of the country. Hmm. Yeah. All right, Jay, good luck. All right. This next question is from Emily. Dear wow. <laughs> a name. Dear Shandy, my name is Emily and I am an avid listener and love listening to you guys on my commute to and from work or on my long runs slash workouts at the gym. My husband, Jay, isn't a big podcast listener, but I've put on your Q&As during many road trips and I have to say he's always laughing out loud. Oh, Aww. that's so nice. Thank you for all the lives you fill with joy on a daily basis, smiley face. I've never listened to a funnier, more unbiased, lovely podcast and yours is always the first I want to listen to. We love you. Oh, wow. Emily. I, almost, I can't even handle it. 
that I'm I know, washing. me neither. I, it just makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. It's so nice. It's so Thank nice. You. Too much niceness. Thank I'm, you, I'm, Emily. I'm overindulging <laughs> yeah. in this, this wonder. First of all, my husband and I just got married in May and we're both 25 years old. He's from Southern Utah and I'm from Southwest Idaho, both living in Northern Utah because school brought us here. We met on the dating app Bumble and I'm so glad because we never would have met otherwise. We are a perfect puzzle piece that fits so well together, but we are so different. And the question I have pertains to this. I do want to preface this with saying how sweet and adoring of a husband he is. And despite our differences, he was pretty set in his ways before we met. And his family always tells me how much he's changed and grown just by dating me. I know I have as well. I'm spontaneous, emotional, and outgoing while he's more practical, responsible, and introverted. And while we really have had to figure out these differences, we have found a lot of common ground while falling in love with each other. He's been more and more open to traveling, going out, doing romantic gestures, being with friends, and I've been way more organized, responsible, and have embraced nights alone with just him and I. We both love a great movie, but what constitutes a great movie is where we differ. I have to say, I feel like I have been extremely open when it comes to watching the movies he likes. Anything violent, suspenseful, or action-packed. I'm not saying I don't like these kinds of movies. I actually do quite a bit, but I have to be in the right mood. But even when I'm not, I feel like I'm a good sport. My favorite kind of movie, on the other hand, is usually a drama with a great plot. And when I'm really feeling like I want to relax, a rom-com or a show like The Bachelor. And recently, I'm loving K-dramas. But it is like pulling teeth trying to get him to watch any of these. Even a historical movie with a touching, interesting plot or a pure comedy does not really interest him. I also should mention that he doesn't usually love movies that were made before the year 2000. (laughs) And there's so many good ones made before that, in my opinion. But the few times we've watched any of these kinds of movies together, he actually liked them more than he anticipated. He refuses to watch The Bachelor and even shows like Survivor and Amazing Race that I think he'd like, and he's pretty unwilling to try. We've had so many little arguments over this. It always ends in frustration, and I just feel like we can't resolve it. When we have these arguments, he'll sometimes say that I don't watch him play video games. And he's acting like that is the equivalent of him watching a rom-com with me. And I heavily disagree. I love the movies so much and honestly feel I have great taste. And I was so excited to finally have someone to watch all my favorites with. The problem is he won't watch about 75% of them. We've watched The Walking Dead all the way through together and lots of action-packed movies that I ended up loving. And I just wish he would give back the same openness. Any show we've watched together has always been in his favorite genre. We have a couple nights a week where he plays Call of Duty and I watch my sappier show or movie but I still just want to watch more things together because we are really busy and have limited time together at night and we usually go out on the weekend. I've had the idea of picking every other movie so we get a good balance but we haven't kept to that. Any ideas that would help him be a little more open minded and return the favor of me watching his movies and shows? Thank you so much for taking the time to answer my question, Emily. (sighs) (laughs) Look, this is a problem that a lot of people have. Uh There's like one thing they have different taste in in their relationship. Everything else is good. Yeah. And yeah, it's annoying. Uh Uh-huh. Trust me, I feel for her. Emily is in a situation that is... Relatable. Relatable and annoying. Yeah, and we've touched on this sort of dynamic before. We had a Q&A where I think we titled it Incompatibility V. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you came up with gonna, that one. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I will link it here. But get get to your answer. I know what you're going to say. There's nothing you can do to fix this problem. Mm. You can't change. Like, she's trying. And and you can keep trying. It's, it's very it's 25, a, I got to say. It's very 25. The, both of them. The fact that he's digging in his heels and the yeah. fact that she keeps trying to change this. And he's comparing this to, like, her watching him play video games. Yeah, it's becoming now a whole thing where, well, you don't watch me play yeah, video yeah, games. Yeah. First of all, you can do these things separately. He can play his video games separately as his own thing, which he should be doing. He's a adult he can play video games alone Uh and you can watch the movies you want to watch alone and he can watch the movies he wants to watch alone your whole relationship is great you're gonna have to play video games and watch movies separately it's not that's that's it and you know i've had relationships like this and i'm not our relationship isn't even that far away from this like no i I, think we are a great example of this i play video games you never watch me play video games i often play it when you're out at night or if we're in i'm and I'm like, you're doing that other thing. Like, I'm occupying the TV. I'm playing yeah. my video game. Like, we don't do a lot of the stuff together. You have a whole list of TV shows you watch without me. And, and there are movies I watch without you, yeah. too. No, I'm saying you, my, it's you, oh, both of you. Uh, <laughs> movies, too. I meant and movies, and not movies. just TV. Yeah, and I have my shows, also K 
shows. Yeah, K. she loves the K I shows. Love, I love the and K shows. And I'm starting to like the K shows yeah. too. But I don't need to like the K shows. The actual fact of the matter is, is that I enjoy having that independence. Oh. I like, sometimes I'll sit down, like you'll be away or like, I don't know, you'll be away for a couple of days or out with your friends. And I'll sit down, I'm like, I've been wanting to watch this movie for a while. And I enjoy the fact that I'm watching it by myself without you. But yes. it's like, oh, I feel like, like this is me again. Yeah. Like I remember that I'm an actual person separate from you and yeah. I'm enjoying something without you having to share it with me. Yeah. And I like that. Mm -hmm. And I know that you like it oh, too. I like too much, too much. <laughs> She likes it too I much. I love it. <laughs> so instead of seeing this as a problem, see this as a gift. Yes. You now have this great relationship. Everything else is great. Your puzzle pieces, as you said, yeah. I didn't say that. This is me time. I get to watch a movie and escape and be me. Yeah. And that's it. You don't have to share it. Yeah. You share everything else. Yeah. I feel like that's where the age is showing the the feeling that it's like we're married we've really we're different but we've really like become each other's puzzle piece like we found all this common ground it's you don't need to do that with everything yes it's a mistake it's, it's a mistake to try to do that with everything because then you spend too much time together and then you don't have your autonomy your individuality yes, there is a limit i believe there's a limit. like you and me we do as many things together as humanly possible before yeah. it's ridiculous yeah and I'm okay with that. Yeah, but I actually love that the TV, movie, video game realm is the area where we yes. we don't, we like go when it comes to that. Imagine if we only like to socialize without each other uh, or if we only like to drink without each or other. Or we are always had a opposite taste in food. In food Oof. or travel yeah. or life choices or morals. Yeah. <laughs> like this is the lowest hanging fruit of things you don't have to share. Yeah, and There's nothing more meaningless yeah. than not having the exact same taste in video games and TV and movies. Yeah. I'm telling you, Take it as a gift. This, is, this a gift. is your time. I feel like she's taking it a little too personally as if it suggests that he doesn't trust her taste or like yeah. when he does give it a shot, he does end up liking it. I don't think it needs to mean that, honestly. You know, sometimes you watch something and you're like, eh. Like sometimes I'll watch something with you that I was excited to watch. And then when I watch it with you, your lack of enthusiasm yeah. about it kind of ruins it a little bit totally. for me. Let it be something that you just enjoy for yourself because being married, you end up doing a lot yes. of shit together. You're not, you're different people. You are two separate people. And I will say this, I'm gonna say it right now. I'm judging his taste in movies. <laughs> Fully, 100% judging. After 2000, he doesn't like um, any movies before 2000. Only the bad movies came out after 2000. <laughs> Almost every movie after 2000 I feel is like bad. that's the one category where he could give a little bit because every movie he's interested in seeing came from the one, one of those movies made of before course. 2000. Like they exist because it, of that. It's absurd to say you don't like any movies before yeah. 2000. That's absurd. Yeah. I'm not sure. That, that may be a generalization. I'm sure there's a few movies before 2000 he likes, but if he doesn't, <laughs> anyway, my point is, is that he probably has not great taste in movies from what I understand. I'm going to say objectively, not great taste in movies, mm. not great taste in film as an art form. And that's fine. Don't share it. That's your thing. But if this is a red herring, if basically what you're saying is, his taste in movies is actually bleeding into all sorts of things oh, in our life. And I don't want to go there. No, don't I do don't want to go there. Don't do it. I don't want to go there. But I'm saying is you're 25, that you're very young. It's a young age. Wait, to, are you saying that she can get out of this relationship? I'm saying maybe time, <laughs> maybe time to call it quits. It's so you no, to go that joke. far. That, was, that a was a joke. It was a joke. He's joking. It was. I can joke about it because it's, that it's ridiculous. such a light question. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Okay, I agree. I no. agree with everything you've said here. I know that she's. it's a light question. She knows it's a light question. Everyone knows it's a light question. But I think it's more than even being just a light question. It is a positive thing. Yes, it's Let a it be. positive thing. Let it be. Enjoy the differences. Especially, as, you know, 25, They have if they're going to be together forever, they have a long life. A long life of, of doing forcing a lot of things each together. other to watch movies yeah. they don't want to watch. Yeah. And let his taste, maybe in 10 years, he'll come to the light. And they'll be like, wow, all these great films oh, I never really appreciated. I don't want to see these action movies from 2015. Oh. Fast and Furious, enough. I've seen it enough times. <laughs> I'm sick of it. I want to watch these cool movies. No, it's true. I think that his taste and her taste might evolve and they might end up going in the same direction. Yeah. You, you just don't know. Enjoy it for what it is at this point in time and see the positive in it. Yeah. I love love the solo time. It's great. It's the best. All right, Emily. Good luck. I really do not think you need it. 
All right, then, Andy, I think that's a wrap for this Q&A. Yeah. First of 2024. First of 2024. Yes. Many to come. Many to come, especially this year. Yes, yeah. more than usual. More than usual. Because we're listening to you. It's what lots you asked for. Lots of Qs and lots of As. Yes, and if this is not what you asked for, then maybe you need to be more vocal about what you want. Yes, we will get our answer. All right, if you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram, and TikTok. leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast ratings and reviews. Tell your friends and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye.